All right, in this video, I'm going to explain one of the most useful packages. It's the exam randomized choice packages, this one right here. Um, and basically, it allows you to type the answer choices to a multiple choice question in whatever order you want, and then it will automatically randomize it for you. I think this solves a lot of problems. Number one, um, like I said in the, in the introduction video, if you write the answer choices and then randomize them yourself, there's a couple of things that can go wrong. One, you can make a copy and paste error. Two, you can do things like, you know, have have um, the same answer twice or things along those lines. Two, um, maybe things aren't so randomized and we accidentally make all of the answer choices B and C or something along those lines. Um, another problem is that if you want to have multiple copies of the exam so that your, you know, two students don't have the same exam or have the same answer choices, you have to go through and randomize that again. Um, and it just makes things a little bit difficult. It, it makes things more difficult than it needs to be because randomizing answer choices is a task that a computer can do much better than we can. Um, and it's something that a computer do, can do, so we should let the computer do it. And that's where the exam randomized choices package come in, comes in. So let me come down here. All I'm going to do is just change this right here. So I'm going to keep the, everything here the same, except I am going to turn off. I don't want to, well, let's not print the answers right now. Well, I'll keep the print answers on. Um, instead, of, um, instead of choices, the environment is randomized choices. I've already, I've already forgotten. Randomized choices. And down here, it's going to be randomized. Okay, now what's going to happen when I compile this, if everything goes according to plan, all of these answer choices are going to be there, uh, but in a different order, and you'll be able to track it because the correct answer, the A, the A, the A will, or the sine X plus C will no longer be A. So now I recompile this, or I guess there's a 25% chance it'll still be A. When I recompile this, let's see what happens. And um, we get a different ordering. Now, I need to explain something. When I recompile it now, I'm going to recompile it right now. Most likely, it's going to keep this same exact order. Okay, notice how it's the same exact order. If I recompile it again, the same thing is going to happen. Now, what's going on with the exam randomized choices? It uses a random number generator. Random, jump, random number generators basically need to take a seed value, and from that seed value, they'll compute the next uh, the next random number. So if you have the seed value, it's actually not a random number generator. It's completely deterministic. Okay, there's an, meaning there's an algorithm that gives you the next number. Uh, the seed comes from the computer's internal clock, and it gets a new seed every minute. So we have to wait at least a minute uh, to be able to get a new set of answers. So probably not going to be there yet. Okay, we were. But now if I recompile it again, if I recompile it again, it's going to keep it the same. Okay, and so you just have to wait the next minute to recompile it again to get a new order of questions. But again, the good thing about this is you can always make sure your correct answer choice is number one. The distractors come next. I just think doing things like that um, it's just kind of best practices when writing an exam because you always make sure you have exactly one correct answer. Um, and then if you want to sort of, so I don't like this. We can talk about this in the discussion. Uh, if, you're, if you're not so uh, confident in your ability to get exactly, to always ha to have a correct answer being there for every, um, for every multiple choice question, you can always write none of the above. Um, the obvious problem here is when I recompile it, we have none of the above as answer choice C. Obviously, want that we want that to be answer choice E. Uh, so you can give this an optional argument here. I think it's keep last. And when I recompile this, it's going to make none of the above stay the last, uh, the last answer choice. Okay, um, and of course. Um, this this is not going to be correct for this, but if I want this to be, whoops. The correct choice, you can all also make that the correct choice. So I like I said, uh, I don't I don't like having none of the above as an answer choice. 
Uh, but we can talk about that. You can talk about why I'm right about that or wrong about that uh, in the discussion. Whoops. Okay. I don't know why I'm, I feel like I need to put this back. I just want everybody to know that I know what the antiderivative of, co of cosine x is. Okay, um, so that's it for this video. Again, um, I'm going to post a link to a document that talks about the exam randomized choices package. There's a link posted that talks about, uh, to Overleaf, that talks about the exam class. I hope this is something uh, that you guys will find helpful, uh, those of you who are teachers.